we're going to talk about your heart, not meaning your heart, but the person's heart. The heart of the person, how it works, and what to do if it fails. Absolutely. Yeah, we're, you know, right now, February is American Heart Health Month, and the Cleveland Clinic has just released the results of its 2018 Heart Health Survey. And it had some really striking findings, and I think the, the, main, the main striking finding was that many Americans don't really know enough about their heart health, and uh, specifically where it comes to heart emergencies. Okay, and I understand that the majority Almost 60% or 6 out of 10 Americans know very little about heart health. Absolutely. As I said, that was one of the main findings from the survey. And this is such, this is so crucial because heart health is, heart disease is the number one cause of death in the U.S. and around the world. And every year over 700,000 Americans experience a heart attack, which, which can have very serious consequences and which can be fatal. So it's really important that people equip themselves with the knowledge about how to identify the symptoms of these heart emergencies and how to respond appropriately in an urgent setting. I understand also that p people are often confused about the difference between a heart attack and a stroke. Absolutely, this was one of the you know striking findings from the survey. Heart attack and stroke are, are two very urgent, um, serious conditions, but they are different conditions. They have different treatments, and they present differently. So if we want to go through first, firstly a heart attack, the typical symptoms of a heart attack can be recognized by a sudden onset of chest pain, often described as a pressure, squeezing, tightness in the center of the chest or around the chest area, which can go to one or both arms, can go up to the jaw or even into the back. It may be associated with a sudden onset of a change in your breathing or shortness of breath, or shortness of breath might be the only symptom. Now on the other hand, when we talk about stroke, Symptoms that are more suggestive of a stroke include a sudden onset of weakness or numbness on one side of the face or on one side of the body, one arm, one leg, or both, and slurred speech. So they're the, the, you know, the key differences between typical heart attack symptoms and typical stroke symptoms. And one other thing, uh, I understand that women may have different symptoms than men. Is that correct? Certainly, that's, you know, it's correct that women can present differently when they, when they are having a heart attack. They may have different symptoms to men. And some of these less common symptoms that women and certain other groups may be more likely to present with include sudden onset of nausea, vomiting, stomach pain or epigastric pain or heartburn, palpitations, which is a sudden racing of the heart, heartbeat, or sweating, fatigue. These can be also heart attack indicators in, in particular populations. Okay, and uh, what is the biggest misconception that people have about heart attacks? Sure, I think you know, we've gone through some of the misconceptions in terms of you know, confusing heart attack and stroke and um, not being aware of less typical symptoms of heart attack. I think another one and another striking one from the survey was that most Americans, I think 9 out of 10 Americans, think that a cardiac arrest and a heart attack are the same thing. They're two very different things. When we talk about a cardiac arrest, we're talking about a sudden stopping of the heart pump due to an electrical problem or fault within the heart. When we talk about a heart attack, we typically mean a sudden blockage in one of the arteries that supply the muscle wall of the heart, so that when that's blocked, you interrupt the supply of, of blood flow to that heart muscle, damaging the heart muscle. So there, the, that, that was one of the biggest misconceptions. Okay, and what, di what difference does that make in terms of how the person responds? Well, I, again, that's a very good question. I think if we want to look at um, some, you know, like heart attack symptoms, I think we want patients to remember that we have developed an acronym to help people to remember what to do in a sudden situation if they or their loved one are um, potentially experiencing a heart attack. So it's important to remember these things. The acronym is called SCAN. The letters of SCAN, if I can go down through them, the S stands for symptoms, so typical symptoms or, and or the less typical symptoms that we discussed. The C stands for calling 911, and that's really the bottom line in any emergent heart condition, it really is, is calling 911, not driving yourself or to your doctor's office or ER, but, but calling the, uh, the emergency personnel. The A stands for an aspirin. If you or your loved one uh, think they're experiencing a heart attack, then they should chew an aspirin. 
and the N stands for nitroglycerin. So if you have a nitroglycerin to hand. So, you know, for further information, we'd really recommend people go to our website, clevelandclinic.org slash loveyourheart, and that contains a whole host of further information let's, about let's, the survey. Let's, let's, let's go back again to the website. It's clevelandclinic.org. clevelandclinic.org slash loveyourheart. Love your heart. That's, that's a good uh, term to use. So Absolutely. we have two, two important terms. One is scan, S-C-A-N, and let's just review scan again. So uh, scan stands for symptoms, call 911, aspirin, and nitroglycerin. And also we have further information and just to help people to go through this acronym again on the website that we discussed. Okay, which is clevelandclinic.org. Slash love your heart. Love your heart. Absolutely. Okay, that's excellent uh, information to have. And uh, that's, that's the website, is that correct? That's the, that's the website uh, that, that we have. And I'm just going to, uh, if, if it's okay with you, I'm just going to have to move along this morning. We've a lot of different interviews to get through and really want to get this, this information out to as many, as many uh, Americans as we can this morning, all over the well, U.S. Well, actually, actually, I think we, we've covered most of the most important things. It was good talking with you, and I'm sure the information you provided will be helpful to my Health Power audience. Thank you very much. All right. Have a good day. You too.